Hey guys, everything new under the sun. Alright, I want to preface this video that I'm going to talk about the Zeno MSATA drive. I want to preface it by saying it didn't turn out to be what I expected. In fact, it was a little bit slower. So what we're taking a look at, it, at is the uh, Zeno SSD solid state drive, the 120 gigabyte MSATA for my Dribble 5N. So without further ado, I want to preface it uh, by suggesting that uh, Boy, it wasn't as fast as I thought it was going to be. So let's have a look and we'll go through the speed tests and I'll show you exactly uh, what I did. And you can see the numbers for yourself. All right, so we've got an unbox of the Zeno SSD M1 128 gigabyte M SATA drive. Just to take a look at the outside of the box. The packaging I find for Zeno is quite good. I got this particular one, I believe it was off Amazon. Um, and I believe it was about $60, $50, something like that. It wasn't too bad, all things considered. It's a nice size drive. I do have a, a Drobo um, 5N, which does have the M SATA bay on the bottom, which is for acceleration. And uh, it, apparently um, the max the uh, Drobo can use is 64 gigabytes. So a lot of people say don't bother getting anything over 64 gigabytes, uh, except the caveat is, of course, that with SSDs, the larger it is, if the system can write across a larger size, then the SSD uh, will last it a little bit longer because it can write over um, a larger size. So if, if uh, cells go dead, areas of the drive go dead, um, it can write elsewhere. So that's what I did. So uh, nothing particular to say about this otherwise. I mean, it's just a 128 gigabyte drive M1. I don't even know what quality class it is, but the, the packaging is uh, quite nice. So, and it looks pretty standard to me and wrapped up in a little bag and, and well protected in foam. So you have you can have a look at the stats there, um, but this is your, your straight up M SATA drive for Drobo. Now I use the Black Magic speed test to take a look at it. I sped this up probably four times, I think. And you can kind of see the top numbers. So this is the right speed, and then you see the, the, the read speed, then the right speed, and they're kind of keeping at their max that they ended off was at. So I was getting about 30 megabytes right speed and about 80 to 90, I think it maxes it at like 97, 98 megabytes read speed. This is prior to uh, placing the M SATA in the Drobo itself. This, this is the benchmark. I stuck with the 5 gigabyte file, which is in its configuration, and uh, the, the Drobo was the target disk, of course. So it's writing to that, and I could see it writing to it uh, over my network. So now I've got the uh, Drobo here. We're going to go ahead and uh, flip this Drobo over. To reveal the M SATA door, and it's a super easy uh, install. You uh, pull that latch across, pick up the door. It doesn't flip out or anything. You got to pick it up with your fingernail, and then you have a nice empty bay. Of course, uh, this is the first time I've had any sort of a M SATA drive in here, um, so I just want to prove to you that I actually um, tested it prior to putting this in. I did touch the, touch the metal here just for static purposes, just to make sure that I was grounded. Always a good thing to do before you touch a circuit board, make sure you're grounded to whatever it is you're doing. Um, and then I went ahead and, and stuck it in. So let's zoom in here so you can see how it's done. So you literally stick the contacts in first, and then you press it down onto a, little, a couple of little plastic posts, I guess. Make sure it's nice and snug in there. Um, down hard, I gave it a couple pushes. Then you put the lid on. Snap it in place, and in theory, you're good to go. In my case, I had to actually pull the latch back on this one. I've had this whole Drobo apart to clean it. It's always a good thing to do to take it apart, dust it out every once in a while. Uh, that's kind of one of the major uh, issues with that's going to cause failure. So now I got the uh, the 5N back up. It does say Drobo FS, but this is a 5N, as you can see by beside it. So the cool factor is you can see the uh, M SATA showing up below your list of drives, that's very cool. It also says, it says good, uh, and it says life 100%. So I'm not sure why it says life, because that's different than with the with the spin drives. I don't know if it reads errors on the M SATA drive, because the rest of the drives just show good like I'm showing there. So I'm going through the bays, and of course if you click through the bays, it finally gets down to the SATA. So pretty neat the way it, it represents it. Nice little graphic on the bottom, and you hover over it, and, and, and it says that the M SATA is in there. So that's pretty cool. It, of course, doesn't uh, significantly change the storage. 128 gigabytes is nothing compared to the rest of the drives. Uh, and uh, I also went through the options there just to see if there was anything special to the MSATA drive itself. And there's no other extra features uh, special for the MSATA, so there's no real configuration there. 
Um, you know, you, you don't you don't select uh, any performance values uh, for that. So the next thing I did was I went to speed test Black Magic and I started testing it again. So here I'm uh, testing the speed. I've got it in uh, regular speed here, so you can see uh, how fast it goes. And I think it's oh, okay. There it was it was spinning, spooling up here. Now interestingly, it started out very slow. The performance was way down from what I was doing without it. Interesting, um, because I, I guess it took a while to spool up. It was maxing out at 75, 74 megabytes read, where I was getting 96 before. You can see some of these tests up to only 40 megabytes read right there. 32 megabytes right, and there's 45. You can see it kind of popping up real high initially, um, and that would be the indicator of the MSATA. But what I was disappointed with, and why I prefaced the video, is because you can see the results here. Um, I'm not really getting a whole lot, maybe a couple of megabytes. Uh, higher write speed and a couple of megabytes higher read speed, but not even because I saw it max above that uh, in the previous test that you saw. I'm going to put a above and below image, uh, although uh, low quality in a second here, but you can kind of see 96 megabytes uh, read. That's pro approaching the 100 megabyte limit of, of the gig Ethernet, of course. And the, the, the write is only about 34 or 35. So on the top is pre is without the SATA drive, without the MSATA drive. It's a little blurry. The bottom is with the MSAT, and you can see there's there's really no difference. And I, I didn't hunt around for the highest numbers or anything like that. I was actually kind of disappointed. Um, another usability thing is I was using iPhoto, and again I wasn't wowed. I don't know if it was slower. I can't tell, um, but I certainly wasn't wowed by any sort of performance increase. Now it's possible that this actually takes uh, some time to to normalize for the Drobo 5N to learn its stuff uh, and, and learn your behavior and learn the app that's you know accessing files. So it can kind of optimize the speeds, uh, but I was in iPhoto for, uh, for or photos. It's called now. I was in photos for a while, and I also let the tool run for a while. It was sped up in the previous test there, and it it, it did take some time to spool up. Uh, but once it started going, it kind of maxed out at what the values were prior to. So I guess that's interesting. It goes to show you that if you're accessing net new data. Uh, you're not going to get any more performance. If you're working on the same, you know, 100 gig file or less, maybe it'll keep reading and writing from that MSATA. But if you're working on a larger album, such as Photos, which is a 400 gig album uh, or file size, um, it's got to keep reading from the drives to the MSATA, so it's not going to speed up. And I almost wonder if uh, the, the logic in the 5N actually, you know, caching to the MSATA adds one more step for it before it gets the data to you so that the uh, the, the uh, read isn't coming directly from the hard drives rather but it's going from the hard drives to the MSATA and then to your computer. I'm, I'm using this on a MacBook Pro across a gigabit Ethernet connection effectively. So overall I wasn't super impressed uh, to be absolutely honest about the, about the performance of this in uh, in iPhoto. I'm not experiencing it. Maybe I will in a couple of days as, as may, maybe the 5N take some time to to kind of figure out uh, your behaviors and the, and the files that off, are often used, the frequently accessed stuff, and and maybe uh, loading up you know a folder and file directory is a little bit snappier, um, but I'm not seeing any huge improvement, especially for write speed, um, uh, over what it was before, and in fact it almost looked like it was a little bit slower. So something to think about. It's interesting. I don't know. I don't think that's the fault of the uh, Zeno drive by any chance. I just uh, I think maybe I'm not using it in the way that kind of, it kind of uses it optimally or makes uh, makes it shine really. So I'll leave it there, guys. Hopefully that was a helpful review for you guys. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.